Good evening. This is Tuesday of Holy Week. Usually we do even song during Holy Week, but because of the quarantine, we're moving to evening prayer, which can be found on page 115 of your Book of Common Prayer. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Next, we'll do the confession of sin found on page 116 of your Book of Common Prayer. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us sit, stand, or kneel in silence, and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Next, if you'll turn to page 117 of the Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Next, we'll say, O gracious light, the Fossilorum, on page 118 of the Book of Common Prayer. Together. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Next, we'll say together Psalm 94, which can be found on page 722 of your Book of Common Prayer. Together. O Lord God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, show yourself. Rise up, O judge of the world. Give the arrogant their just deserts. How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? They bluster in their insolence. All evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your chosen nation. They murder the widow and the stranger and put the orphans to death. Yet they say, the Lord does not see the God of Jacob takes no notice. Consider well, you dullards among the people. When, the, when will you fools understand? He that planted the ear, does he not hear? He that formed the eye, does he not see? He who admonishes the nations, will he not punish? He who teaches all the world, has he no knowledge? The Lord knows our human thoughts, how like a puff of wind they are. Happy are they whom you instruct, O Lord, whom you teach out of your law, to give them rest in evil days, 
until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his own. For judgment will be, again be just, and all the true of heart will follow it. Who rose up for me against the wicked? Who took my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not come to my help, I should soon have dwelt in a land of silence. As often as I said my foot has slipped, your love, O Lord, upheld me. When many cares fill my mind, your consolations cheer my soul. Can a corrupt tribunal have any part with you, one which frames evil into law? They conspire against the life of the just and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my rock my God, the rock of my trust. He will turn their wickedness back upon them and destroy them in their own malice. The Lord our God will destroy them. Our first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 22. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raised the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us, as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in our relations with you, with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so, relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. For we do not write you anything you cannot read or understand. And I hope that, as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us, just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia, and to come back to you from Macedonia, and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner, so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. The word of the Lord. We will now read together the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, found on page 119 of the Book of Common Prayer. Together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. 
he has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 27 through 33. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. They arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, they feared the people, for everyone held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Jesus says, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Next, we will say the Song of Simeon, found on page 120 of your Book of Common Prayer. Together. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It's been an interesting Holy Week so far. We started this recording yesterday and we've had so many issues with recording after recording. This is actually our third try uh, to, to get it right. And it's indicative of a wider problem in the church right now. We're just trying to get it right. We can't seem to, to, to meet together in person and as the Episcopal Church woefully, woefully ignorant of how to use technology to reach out to its people, we're behind the eight ball. It's kind of funny. It's a little sad, but mostly it's a learning experience. We're experiencing new things every single day. We're experiencing new ways in which to reach out to our people, to even reach out to ourselves, to feel a different kind of spirit moving within the body of Christ. It's Holy Week. It's Holy Week. And we're watching television in order to worship. Who would have thunk it? But here we are. Yesterday, the clergy met with the bishop over Zoom, which is this technological wizardry that allows all of us to be on the same screen together and to worship together. And we met and we renewed our ordination vows. We watched the bishop consecrate oils and we just listened to him preach. Typically, this wouldn't have been a sad moment as it's what we have. But in retrospect, I thought about what it was afterward that it would be his last time with us on a Holy Monday as our diocesan bishop. A man that has served for 13 years faithfully in a position who has seen this diocese at its lowest and brought it to such a healthy and vibrant place had to, on his last Holy Monday with his clergy, do so away from them on the moment of his retirement, on the eve of his retirement, going away as he is, he had to spin that away from his clergy. There's a lot of Holy Week in that. 
There's a lot of holy week in that. We work so hard to get all these services together and to make sure that they're useful and value added for everybody that participates. And we want people in pews and we want to see each other and, you know, kind of walk through this week together, journey together in proximity. But that's simply not possible right now. So we have video cameras, we have technology, and thanks be to God that we do. Without it, we wouldn't hear or see each other at all. It's a new era. It's a new way of worship that none of us had ever considered before until we had to. And even though the bishop is probably saddened by his lack of proximity to his clergy, I can imagine that he's still very grateful for the clergy that show up. Because it's harder. It's harder to be at home in your PJs and not and knowing that you don't have to get dressed up and go to church or you don't have to shower at all. You can just sit at home. It's hard to really get that going to say, you know what, I need to get on YouTube and do some worship. It's difficult. I think it takes more faith to actually sit at home and push a button than it does to go to a church. Because we hear people around us, that's not real, it's not real worship. Well, I have news for them. It is, it's absolutely real. What I felt yesterday with my bishop and with my colleagues was nothing short of miraculous. It was beautiful. It was a bunch of people who were struggling how to learn to use technology just hoping that they got it right, just for a glimpse of one another, just for a moment to be together and worship, for a moment to stand or sit together and renew ordination vows, to say yes again and again to God, to say, yes, God, we will continue to serve. Yes, God, we will respect the dignity of every human being. Yes, God. We will spread by good the, by word and deed the good news of Jesus Christ. To say those things is so important and timely, especially given our context. I can imagine the disciples of Jesus, when Jesus disappears, feel a little abandonment. But did Jesus disappear? No. Their leader just resurrected, beat death, that's all. And they sat and they wondered. Without proximity, without that closeness, would they still be able to believe? They didn't know then that their belief would lead 2,000 later, 2,000 years later to the greatest source of faith in the world. Because they went through that hard time, they came through it like a crucible. They were refined. They were made into steel. Given a faith that projected and protected and sent them out in the world to do things that no one has seen before. Peter raised people from the dead. Paul had a conversion and wrote a third of the Bible. We've seen it over the years. People that turned to faith have moved mountains. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. There are many, many more. So my question is this, is Holy Week diminished for you or is it just different? I think knowing the difference might make the difference in the rest of the world. It's our job to bring joy. It's our job to speak the words that people long to hear. It's our job to maintain a sense of faith, even in the darkest of times, even while we're separated, to realize that we are still together. On this Holy Tuesday, while we miss the sounds of our choir and while we miss the comfort of each other sitting near, we should rest assured in the fact that the resurrection is coming. And I don't just mean the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean the Episcopal Church of the resurrection as well. It won't always be like this. There will be a day that we come together again and that we sit in our pews again and we worship together physically. And on that day, we will be forever changed because we will have walked through fire as well. 
and made it out through the other side because we chose to stay connected. We chose to remain strong in faith and not let the world tell us that a disease was going to take church away because we are church, not a building. Our beloved space will be waiting for us when we return, but until then, it is up to us to be church. Now go, be church. Next, we will say the Apostles' Creed, found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 120. Together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers can be found on page 121 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Next, we'll say Suffrage B, which can be found on page 122 of your Book of Common Prayer. that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints and trusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. And now for the collect of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Protection can be found on page 124 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past, and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours, through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A collect attributed to St. Augustine. Page 124 of your Book of Common Prayer. 
Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. We pray for the church, the people in it, and the work it's been given to do, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Edward, our bishop, and every clergy person everywhere. We pray for all in authority for this nation and for every nation in the world, especially Donald, our president, Kevin, our governor, and David, our mayor. We pray for unification and harmony among all people in the world. We pray for the health and vitality of Oklahoma City. We pray for all who suffer any affliction. Remembering especially those on our parish prayer list. Tony, Glenn, Alyssa, Mary Ann, Robert, Glenn, Kay, Susie, Bill, Joe, Gary, Penny, Lorna, Ed, Hunter, Margaret, Fran, the Sisson family, the Bobo family, Liam, the Schellenberger family, Kennedy, Jan, Susan, Memphis, Jeannie, Brandy, David, Harrison, Jan, Janet, Renee, Adelie, Emma, Elise, Niska, Noah, Randy, Winter, Daniel and Heather, Amy Ann, John, Patricia, Amy, Steve, Grace, Ira, and Maple. You may add your own petitions and thanksgivings right now. Pray for all who have died, especially those who have lost their lives to COVID-19 and those who mourn their loss. We will now say together the prayer of St. John Chrysostom, found on page 126 of your Book of Common Prayer. Together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be at peace. Do not look forward in fear to the changes of life. Rather, look to them with full hope as they arise. God, whose very own you are, will deliver you from out of them. He has kept you hitherto, and he will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand it, God will bury you in his arms. Do not fear what may happen tomorrow. The same everlasting Father who cares for you today will take care of you then and every day. He will either shield you from suffering or will give you unfailing strength to bear it. So be at peace. We put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations and go forth with the blessing of the Father Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>